Welcome to this introductory demonstration of Bonsai 3D. This demo was intended to be a brief overview of just a few of the many features in Bonsai 3D. We'll begin by asking, what is Bonsai 3D? Well, Bonsai 3D is a new 3D modeler. It's developed to fill the need for quick, easy, simple, yet very robust 3D modeling. The Bonsai tools have resulted from research and user input from the past 15 years. Its goal is to support the conceptual and sketching stages of a design, yet produce CAD accurate models that can be exported and used further down the production pipeline, such as rendering, animation, construction drawings, fabrication, and rapid prototyping with 3D printing or any other application that requires good, clean, solid 3D models from Bonsai 3D. You can think of Bonsai 3D as a small and intuitive program, yet very big on the features and capabilities that it offers. The bottom line is it's easy, it's fun, it's smart, and it's very affordable. Be sure to check out the Bonsai 3D website at www.bonsai3d.com for all the latest and greatest information on Bonsai 3D, and don't forget to download a fully functional trial version for yourself. So let's see what the excitement is all about. Of the hundreds of features available, we would like to show you the top 10 reasons why you're going to love Bonsai 3D. It should be noted that I think any of these features could be listed as number one in my book, but we can't have every feature as number one, so we'll let you decide. At number 10 is the ease of sculpting objects. Move the cursor over the modeling tool icons and you can see that there's a suite of different tools that we can choose from. Select the tool that you want and we're ready to start drawing. Let's select the rectangle tool and extrude that into a 3D solid. As we move the cursor over the object, notice that the reference plane automatically highlights on the faces of the object. So I can draw right on the face and pull up or outward to add volume, or if I draw on the surface and push inward, I can subtract volume from the object. And if I were to draw on any face of the object and push the profile all the way through, I can actually create a hole through the object. One of my favorite tools for sculpting objects is the reshape tool allows me to click on any face and reshape the object. This is real-time Boolean operations. As I pull outward, it adds volume, and as I push it inward, it subtracts volume. I can click on any face and reshape it to re-manipulate the form. There's a neat little option that this reshape tool has. It's the Keep Edges option. By default, it's off. If I turn that on, then if I reshape the object and click and drag the face, the original edges of the face that I clicked on will remain in the object. So I can build off the previous reshaping operation. Now this is one single solid object, but we can see that all those additional edges are remaining in the object. If I want, I can use the Unmesh tool, simply click on the object, and I can get rid of all of those extra edges that are in that object. And how about the Offset Outline tool? That's really nice. All we have to do is uh, click on a face and we can generate a offset from the boundary of that face. And that offset is automatically inserted into the face of the object, which is nice because now we can use the reshape tool and push inward or outward to then reshape the object from that new inserted face. And there's also a offset segment tool. Just simply click on the edge of any part of your object and you can insert a segment across any boundary in that face, even across holes if you want. So let's insert a segment right there. Let's go back to the reshape tool and I'm going to turn off the keep edges option and now I'll select that new face that was derived from the inserted segment and reshape it. One other way to sculpt object is to draw right on the face of the object. For example, select the vector line tool in the 2D surface icon and make sure the insert option is turned on and then I can draw the vector line and insert it into any face of the object. We'll draw a vector line across the face like this and I will double click at the end and that line that I've drawn has been inserted into the object. So if I were to use the reshape tool, you can see I can reshape that new face and pull it out to change the shape. There's also the imprint tool, which can imprint a 2D shape into an existing object. Before we show that, let's draw the 2D shape. We'll use the rectangle tool and turn off the insert option. We'll draw the rectangle right on the face of the object. With the insert option off, this is generated as a separate object and is not inserted into it. For example, if I were to move the object off to the side, you can see that that is a separate entity. Undo the operation and bring it back. And now what we'll do is modify that 2D shape. Maybe add a fillet so we can round the corners. And then we'll go to the imprint tool, click on your 2D shape first, click on your 3D solid object, and that 2D shape is imprinted into the object. And now we can use the reshape tool to reshape that new face that we just imprinted into that object. 
One other way to modify your object is to move just parts of the object. For example, hit the Command key on Mac or the Control key on Windows and you can move a single segment. Or you can move a single point. As you're moving the point or segment, you can press and release the Command key on Mac or Control key on Windows to change to the perpendicular direction. You can move points, segments, faces, holes, outlines, or the entire object. And now we'll move on to reason number nine of why you're just going to love Bonsai 3D, and that would be its smart interface. Automatic guides automatically appear whenever you're drawing shapes. For example, if I select the vector line tool on the 3D enclosure icon to create a wall, as soon as I start clicking, you'll see that all sorts of different colored lines will then represent different directions in my 3D space. For example, red, green, and blue will represent the X, Y, and Z orientation, and the magenta line will represent a tangential condition. So I can either maintain a tangency as I'm drawing a line off of an arc, or I can also maintain a perpendicular relationship off of some other vector line by snapping to these automatic guides. You can also create your own temporary guides by hitting the spacebar. For example, if we choose a rectangle tool, before I start clicking, I'll snap to the point here, hit the spacebar, snap on the corner point of that building, hit the spacebar. Now when I draw the rectangle, I'll click at the intersection of where those two temporary guides intersect. So I can have a massing model, which will be at the corner of where the two buildings intersect. And permanent guides can be drawn directly in the modeling window and can be moved and rotated just like any other object. For example, select the guide tool and click on two points and you can create a guide line. Let's Click on two more points over here for a second guideline along the other arm of the bracket. And these are very useful as construction lines. For example, we can uh, use the circle tool. Make sure you have the insert option on and the 3D extrusion icon selected. So I can snap right to the intersection of those two guidelines. And then I can take the circle and punch it through to create a hole which is aligned with both of the holes on the other arms of the bracket using our permanent guidelines. Reason number eight for loving Bonsai 3D is that it contains many classic modeling tools with real-time dynamic editing. For example, Revolve. Simply click on any 2D open or close shape, click on a Revolve axis, and you have an object of revolution. With all sorts of controls that you can modify, such as the revolution angle or the original source shape, and you can modify those interactively in the modeling window or in the tool options palette. And how about helical type objects? Click on any shape, Click on any line as the helical axis, and the shape will then revolve around that helical axis. All sorts of controls we can modify in the modeling window to change the shape or the helical parameters, and we can also change those parameters numerically in the tool options palette. And how about a classical sweep operation? Simply click the source shape, click the path, and the source follows along the path. Now you can modify all the sweeping parameters graphically in the modeling window. You can change the orientation, the scale, the original source shape itself, the original path line. All these parameters can be edited in real time inside of the Bonsai 3D interface. And of course walls can be edited just as well. Select the vector line tool, the 3D enclosure icon, and start drawing a 3D wall. Let's switch to an arc. Click on the magenta guideline so it remains tangent and extrude that into a 3D solid wall. And we have all sorts of controls to change the wall width, the wall height, change the angle of the arc, and of course you can see the parameters inside the tool options can be numerically modified as well. And coming in at number seven is the deformation tools in Bonsai 3D. Bonsai 3D lets you twist, bend, bulge, and taper any object in your scene. You can deform multiple objects at the same time, you can deform just part of an object if you want, and you can even apply multiple deformations to the same object. This really makes modeling fun.